Hey beautiful, how you doing tonight? Welcome back to another episode of Lucky After Dark. <laughs> Today we're talking about how in the world do the gay guys survive in prison. As a gay guy myself and somebody who has been sadly locked up in prison, I've survived. I actually made it out of prison. Hey, I'm here to tell the story and I didn't catch any extra time. I actually made it out without any scars. There's a lot of gay people, unfortunately, that I have came across that have gashes on their face, missing teeth, you know, swollen eyes, just like one person actually lost an eye, actually. So I came out somehow without any scars, all of my teeth, well, except for these teeth that I had pulled, I had a few teeth pulled, which depressed the snot out of me because I've never had any teeth pulled, but I was so stressed up in there that I ended up getting an abscess and they ended up having to pull my teeth. But that's not why we're here tonight. We're talking about how do gay guys survive in prison. I'm going to tell you how I did because it's a very tricky way. It's not easy, to be honest with you. Prison is very difficult in general, I think just for any person, period, but especially for gay guys because it's an environment where it's nothing but guys, you, there's only two types of guys that all gay people come across. Either they want nothing to do with them and they constantly throw you out of the cell. Some people, they won't even allow you in the pod. They force you to not use the phone at all or use certain kinds of phones. You can only use certain kinds of showers. You can only sit at certain tables. There have been places, even in the chow hall, I used to have such anxiety going into the chow hall for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I didn't know what tables were what. Like, you had tables that were assigned only to the gang members, assigned only to whatever, you know, Aryan Brotherhood, the Bloods here, the, the Crips there, like, you know, it was, it was a lot of anxiety, like, so how do you survive that? The best way that I survived, I mean, honestly, well, I'll save the best for last. I'll tell you the, the first, like, convenient ways. The first thing that you need to do is you need to actually become allies with other people that's really the only way that you'll survive is for me i tried to befriend the other gay people which was actually not that easy out here i love gay people i i as somebody who is biracial and light-skinned i always grew up feeling misplaced because i'm not white obviously and when I tried to fit in with the black people, you know, I was criticized then because it's like, you know, oh, you don't act black, you don't look black, whatever. I used to be teased a lot and made fun of. So then by the time that I got older and came out of the closet, I came out very young. I came out at 14 years old and I was immediately accepted by the gay community. It's like the only requirement to be one of us is that you're gay. That's it. They don't care about, you know, how masculine you are, how feminine you are how loud you express yourself, how quiet you express yourself, what your color is, race, and all of that stuff. I feel like in today's world, it's starting to become a little bit more divided, but even still, there's there's like inclusion, but that's just a separate thing. Regardless, in the prison world, sadly, the gay community is very competitive and just territorial. So as I came into the picture, immediately people would just be like on guard and already trying to come up with ways to get me out of the pod, get me out of the picture because they felt like I was a threat to, you know, whomever it was that they were trying to talk with. Because the pool of men who interact like publicly with the queens with the the gay people in prison it's very small so a lot of the gay people have kind of been passed around or they they've all dealt with different people at different times and stuff and i didn't want to be any part of that for one i'm not trying to get anybody's leftovers for another thing i wasn't really even trying to be with anybody period so it was to my benefit that i came in like wanting to just be friends with the the gay people you know i just wanted a support system like hey you're gay I'm gay too this is prison <laughs> I'll look out for you if you look out for me type of thing but as I went along my like prison you know bid my my prison experience I realized that that's not the best way to survive in prison because they try to stab you in the back all the time 
whether you are not trying to compete with them, they are still trying to compete with you. So that was a problem. The another so then I would say that the next way to try to like survive in prison is then just to become friendly with people in general. And at the same time, you want to be out of the way. Like a lot of people have a precon a preconceived notion that I almost couldn't say it, but I did. <laughs> a preconceived notion that a lot of the gay people are troublemakers. Like they constantly cause a lot of ruckus. They instigate a lot of you know trouble with the men. Cause riots. Um, just spread rumors and gossip. They just they just bring a lot of drama with them. That's what a lot of people think about all the gay people, and that like assumption is actually a little bit true. So me personally, I was trying not to do that. I was trying to be as quiet as possible, be as under the radar as possible. And it was a difficult thing to do. But nevertheless, it did help me over time. I, over time of being the same and making a few connections with a few different people where they were able to, you know, vouch for me when crap went down or something like that if any kind of trouble came about like I had a few people that actually had my back because they they knew my character then that definitely helped that is a great way to survive which brings me to my next point a major way of surviving in prison especially as a gay person is consistency 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 if you are going to be a hoe Honestly, you need to always be a hoe because the minute that you switch up, that's going to cause problems for you, sadly. But people expect certain things from you and once you stop doing that for people, then that's going to be a problem. But at the same time, somebody like myself, if they see that you're not in that way, then they start to respect it. I was not somebody that was trying to be hopping from one person to the next person. And there were a couple of cases where I kind of was, I guess you could say, like passed around because of cellies, cell situations, cell partners that I had. But after I found one guy that I really liked and I stuck with him and I didn't do anything else with anybody else, then it actually worked out well for me because then people could see like, okay, he's not about that, so we ain't even going to try. Even though people, they always will try the gay people every day every day but over time it becomes less and less and less and less and less you know so consistency but that's really what anybody consistency is a major key to surviving in prison you know you want to be respectful to the people around you and you want to be consistent with how you conduct yourself so this way people kind of grow used to you and they get like adjusted to how you move and the way you behave, how you act and things like that. And, you know, it doesn't shake up the the environment in any kind of way. That really helps you out because eventually, whether people like this or not, the pod becomes like your neighborhood. You know, the people that are in the pod, they start to be like your neighbors. They start to even start to feel like a, a little bit of a uh, protection over, you know, the pod and the people that are in it, you know, gays included. So that's another way. Two more ways that I would say, and are like my final survival ways as a gay person, how a gay person survives in prison is number one, finding someone who will protect you, which is something that I attempted to do. I just made a video yesterday about the booty bandits. You know, what is a prison booty bandit? And unfortunately, I got myself kind of tied up with somebody. Oh my gosh. My camera. Dang. Sorry about that. But unfortunately, I got myself kind of tied up. <laughs> I apologize about that. Shit. But unfortunately, I got myself kind of tied up with somebody who he was a booty bandit, okay? I'm going to have to rig this up to make sure that that doesn't happen again. But technical difficulties, you know, we have technical difficulties. But I'm all right. I hope you're all right. <laughs> but I did get myself kind of tied up with somebody who is a pr prison booty bandit. But the benefit of this particular guy is that he had a lot of respect in the community, I guess you could say, like on the compound. The COs, 
knew him. He had dealings with different people in the administration. I'm talking about like the unit managers. All of the inmates, you know, either were afraid of him or they respected him because he used to be running with the Bloods gang, you know. And uh, it definitely helped to have him as like my guy, my protector. And he watched out for me. He made sure nobody bothered me. He had people watching over me when he wasn't even around. You know, it did kind of start to make me feel a little trapped, which is why I got away from this guy. But at the time, if that's, if that is something that you're comfortable with, it's a good way to survive in prison. So just keep that in the back of your head if you ever get locked up. And I pray to God that you don't. But a great way to survive is to find somebody who will protect you and you just stay with this person because then you don't have to worry about anything. And then the final way with staying along that like train of thought, the final way that I would say is a good method of survival in prison is to actually just pair yourself up well as a gay guy uh the final way as a gay person to survive in prison is to actually pair yourself up with someone because once you're married off it, this is you know a term in prison once you're married off then you are like claimed you belong to somebody and chances are this person he has some sort of prison you know respect of some kind for example the guy that i fell in love with and i'm still with till this day cam i've mentioned him several times on my channel cam he has been sadly locked up since he was 16. There's a lot of people that knew him, you know, a lot of people that knew him. And he had a lot of people that even watched over him because he's been in there since he was a kid. You know, he had just p several people that just knew him. He could go to for help or if we were like running out of commissary and we were just trying to get, you know, hold off until next commissary day or something like that. Uh, he he could go to somebody and they would give him something to, to help me out, especially because they knew that he had, you know, a wife, he had peoples, whatever that they call it. But if you actually get paired up with somebody, if you're a couple in prison, that can actually help you survive as well. But I don't know what y'all expected. I'm really talking about like social methods. <laughs> I mean, of course you can make a shank and all of these things. <laughs> You know, have a lock in your sock, which trust and believe there's been plenty of times that I did that. I never actually had to beat anybody over the head with a lock in my sock. But I, there was a couple of times that I thought it was going to come to that. There was a queen on one compound where I thought that they was about to get in some shit. And I definitely came onto the rec yard with a lock in my sock and I was ready to go. And then there was another time with my baby, with Cam. We was in the program. We was in our cell. we have been rocking out for several months. And he was getting into some trouble with with a guy in there and I came into the cell laced up my shoes put a lock in my sock and I was like so who is this that we gotta go beat the shit out of <laughs> and he just laughed at me he was like my baby is ready to go we ain't beating nobody up you need to calm down you know what I mean so obviously like you know the, those are some methods that you can do but in terms of like socially as a gay guy those are the best things that you can do and I even forgot the other oh just become familiar with someone on the compound, you know, get with somebody that can protect you. Be consistent with your behavior. The more consistent you are over time, the better off it'll be for you. And then just pair up with just anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like just just get yourself paired with somebody. That is truly the best way to survive as a gay guy in prison. So if you want to hear more stories though, you know, I have a prison diary series and um, I had been retyping a few of my entries. They're up on Amazon. The links are all in the the, the links are all in the description and I'm trying to get my story like you know into a book that I can publish you know so uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up I really appreciate the support and subscribe comment you know let me know what you think about my methods of survival I'm telling you that's what worked for me when I was in there you know I don't know if you've been locked up or you have somebody that's locked up or something but I think that it would work whether you're gay or straight, but definitely as a gay person, that is helpful, those tips that I just gave. So I hope you have a wonderful night, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'll see you later. Love you guys. Bye.